Welcome wrestling fans and trading card collectors. Welcome back to Wrestling with Cards. I'm your host, Sam Morning. You can check me out all over social media. Check out the links below and leave a comment while you're at it. Before we get started today, let's just talk about what we got out here. PSA 6, Metal Universe Jordan. What? PSA 6, blasphemy. Guess what? Don't care. Great looking card. Happy to have it. Got a good deal on it. Next, we got Masato Tanaka. Most people in America, with their fans of ECW, remember this guy with numerous table matches getting power bombed through tables by Mike Awesome. This is a fantastic card, and I really love the Leaf series. I know a lot of wrestling card collectors aren't the biggest fans of it, but I'm a big fan. And then we've got the 2018 Topps Update, Glaber Torres. Hopefully this will be a decent investment down the road. So today's video, we're here to talk about cards of my childhood. Obviously, most of us are now, as adults, are looking at trading cards as an alternative investment. But really, it's why we collect is the love of the cards. Most of us watching this video probably started as a kid. I know I did, obviously. That's what the video is about. And it's just fun to share memories of what we have as a kid. So today I've just got a few cards and some memories that they will jog as we go over the cards. I showed this video, I showed this card in my last video, the Hogan 87 Tops. You can see it's got a crease in it, terrible condition, but I've had this card in my collection, even when I got rid of collections. This one has always remained since 1987. I wasn't even very old, but I got to keep this card and it's stuck with me my whole life. And this just brings back memories of watching Hulkamania, running wild in the 80s as a kid, and then just continuing into the 90s. This has always stuck with me. Next, we've got some other 87 tops. Tito Santana, Flip Flop, which I'm not even, I don't even remember. Uh, Jacques Rougeau. Yeah, I was, never really knew much about him until I got older. We've got Butch Reed with his bleach blonde hair jumping the ropes before Dennis Rodman did it. we got the Killer Bees with the Flying Body Press. As you can see, once again, these cards with the creasing. I'm trying to get the light on it so you can see all the creasing and the bends. Those corners are shot. These are trash. But these, I believe, came in the same pack that I got this Hogan out of. So these cards, once again, just remaining in my collection my entire life. Not worth anything to most people. Worth everything to me. Next up from the 80s, we've got these Borden stickers. I believe these came off of milk. Like, you can see barely there's some adhesive right here. I think these were stuck on the back of milk cartons or on the outside of the crates. And you could purchase your milk and get WWF cards. These are stickers. These are ones I have that are still intact. They had Tag Team of the Year, even though a lot of the series doesn't consist of tag teams. There's your Borden logo. You can see these are still sealed. These are about one inch by one and a half inches. Again, these have been in my collection for my entire childhood. Usually I would take the ones I didn't like and stick them on my dad's lunchbox or stick them around somewhere where I thought it was an insult for whatever reason to carry around a wrestler on a binder or something that I thought was going to be an insult, so that was always a funny inside joke to me. Next we have the Macho Man. Oh, look at that. That is a iconic shot of Macho Man Elizabeth. This is probably my favorite one that I own. I mean, I only own three. I've owned some others. Couldn't find them. Again, Tag Team of the Year with Borden. And then last we've got Slick, one of the better managers of the 80s, I thought. I always enjoyed his promos, and he always made me laugh. So there's that. Then I got older into the what most people know as is the new generation, the mid 90s, where WWF was actually not just WWF, but a lot of wrestling was falling on hard times. And I'll never forget pulling this out of a vending machine at a skate rink for a field trip in elementary school. And I still have it. I had a Tatanka one also, and I believe I had one more, but I can't find it. And that is. These holograms, as you can see, official WWF product, although there's nothing on the back. I believe these are stickers. I've never tried to separate it, though, because I always wanted to keep this intact. But, I mean, just look at that. That It's intimidating with Big Yokozuna there. It's got that 
silver autograph that a lot of the 90s cards have. And it just screams 80s and 90s with this hologram. I wish there was more holograms in modern cards, but it seems like today most people want to go with the shiny prism stuff. But this is close. This is me. You could consider this the early silver prism Yokozuna. <laughs> Not really, but it's still fun. But yeah, this there's a whole series of these. And I think this was either a quarter or 50 cents out of the machine. I'm surprised it's stayed in this good a condition for as long as I've had it. But it's a really cool card. I enjoy it. Lastly, towards the Attitude Era, I became even the biggest wrestling fan. I was older. I was able to understand it a little bit better. Instead of just, you know, good guys, bad guys, and silly gimmicks. And Local Indie Show came to Springfield. It was actually World League Wrestling at the time. Harley Race ran it, and they ran a small building, and their first show, they wanted to do a lot of promotion for it, so they had a bunch of the guys show up and do some autographs, meet and greet, stuff like that at the local mall, and luckily, I was able to meet a guy that I was a huge fan of at the time from the UFC that just happened to also be wrestling, Dan the Beast Severn. Now, wait a minute. You're like, that's not a card. Actually, it's a business card, and that's all I or he had at the time. And I think this is a pretty cool nostalgic piece just from, look at that, AOL.com email address. And this is the most like basic form of business card compared to what you see today, but this is why I kept it. Obviously made out to me, autographed by Dan Severn, fits perfectly in the top holder. And this is just a memory of me where I started getting into indie wrestling because I didn't even know it existed until the late 90s during Attitude Era. And it wasn't too long before I saw this guy show up on WWE, so that was kind of a cool thing after the fact. So that's just a few of the cards I have as a childhood. At the end of the day, we all want to make money off this hobby. I mean, I was talking about Glaber Torres and how I hope that's a good investment down the road, and I've already sold a couple of other raw and other graded, higher graded than a six, but I've sold a couple of those already. And we're all here to make money, but memories like what I've talked about today is what I believe the hobby is intended for. So hopefully most people watching this video can kind of balance the two. What are some of your favorite wrestling cards of your childhood? Or maybe some of these that I've talked about today have brought up memories of your wrestling fandom as a childhood. If you have memories of these, or just wrestling in general, or if you have comments on other sports cards, let me know in the comments. Leave it down below, I'll check it out. Also, while you're there, check out all the links to my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, it's all down there. Until next time, see ya wrestling fans.